next video is part two of the logotic series. So we've gone part one, which was the general introduction to how to work with your posture, and part two is building on that understanding. This video will use the blue ball, and it will use the yellow band, and or a band that's long enough, and um, a chair or the equivalent of a bar. Remember the lordosis needs to be corrected and calmed down by appealing to the flexors, um, as in the obliques, pull the hip bones up and stretch out the flexor to ease off the lumbar spine. Therefore, the hamstring and the glute has to kind of tighten, or strengthen is the best way to say it, um, and the abdominal wall here has to strengthen um, to allow the hip flexors and the lower back to find more freedom, more mobility, and to properly transmit the load through the body. Let's start then. Put the ball between your thighs. Um, obviously, if you're looking into screens, you're not sure what you're doing. By all means, have your hand, um, just one hand on the chair. If once you understand this little sequence, um, you understand how to do it without looking but listening, then you could have both hands on the chair. Basically, find your pelvic tilt. So if you're lordotic, you will naturally stand with a bit of a hollow in the back. So you breathe and you draw that um, lower back to a little bit more flat, still leaving you a glute profile and still leaving you therefore with a neutral pelvic area. We go straight to your squats. Now you're either holding on with one hand or with two. It doesn't matter. It matters that you listen to the cueing as your aim is to more um, perfectly every time you do the squat to do it without that huge increase of a lumbar curve. The same principles apply as they would for anyone. The hips pull backwards and the sense of using the seat muscles, the hamstrings and the glutes matters too. The ball between your thighs is helping you get more connection through the adductors and up into the pelvic area. By doing, going down into your squat, you're already constantly having to monitor a neutral pelvis. The correction for you starts the moment you stand and start moving. Into this squat therefore will stay. I think it's best to have the ability to hold on. You breathe deeply in and allow your lumbar spine to go into its extreme. That means it'll increase in the lordosis. You'll feel tightness in the lumbar area. On your next breath out, start to ease your pelvic floor upwards, draw against that ball and flex the lumbar spine then flattens and stretches using everything abdominally. Now instead of going the full range this next time, flow the seat bones upwards, taking you to your natural lordosis, breathing out, shrinking, hollowing, find yourself back into your imprint. Inhale, go back and find that neutral spine, maybe a little bit more than a natural posture would go. But the next time, put yourself into perfect neutral. In other words, the hip bones and the back of the hip bone area, the back of the pelvis here, feel very flat. There's no pressure on the lumbar spine. You can feel your hamstrings and glutes active. And you're going to go down an inch and up an inch, working with the breathing to feel the um, true alignment of neutral spine, pelvic position with squat technique. By pushing it up and down through the heels, you're working towards what we call an end range connection into your hamstring and glute. And they're being asked to play the game rather than being constantly long and um, kind of uninvolved because they constantly hang on your sit bones. People, the next time you're going deep down, stay. We're transitioning now, breathe in. Breathe out and as in the previous part, pelvic tilt until you find yourself not being able to go anymore. So now you've really drawn the, drawn the pubis in the direction of the navel. You feel the crumple area here with the abdominal shrinking you in. Pull your feet to tiptoes and then transition to a flat back. I'm doing the flat back, pos the flat back um, squat because it'll help you work more easily in the pelvic position that is true neutral and free up the lower length of the rectus femoris muscle which crosses both the hip and the knee to get stronger too. So the inhaling and down you go, you feel as though you're sliding your pelvis and your shoulders up and down a wall, exhaling, pushing up. The breath in, your knees go forwards and your breath out, you push to straight legs. 
For the lordosis, the person that's naturally increased of lower back curve, you're working hard at not giving in to the um, predisposition to just arch your lower back. The next time we go down, we'll stay. Breathing in and out then, finger to the last um, to hip bone, thumb to the last rib. Breathe out, use your pelvic floor to pull the pubis forwards. Inhale, then breathe out to allow the pelvis to go back to its neutral. All this while, heels are off the floor and you're working the pelvic floor and the inner thigh, which unloads the hip flexor at this end here again, which is why it's useful for the person that is continuously working through the flexors. The next time you feel that you've put your pelvic position into neutral, you're gonna push back up again and come back down, deeper this time, and then push back up again. Each time you go down, you four more, take the lower, 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 till you feel the muscles that go over the knee joint. You can't feel the knee joint. It has to be that you get the sense of the lengthening fibers inside the knee, straight down through what we call, um, it doesn't matter what we call it, it's just your quads, think of it as your quads. All you know is you couldn't be any more neutral in the posture and you couldn't go any lower pulling the hip bones, sit bones down in the direction of the heels. Stay there, breathe. See if you can create a bit of springiness here. Now this springiness can only be here if you're not tipping and tilting your pelvis going out of an increased um, curve. You've got to make the movement happen really through the fine knee area, okay, and then push all the way up and lower the heels down. Now you could do a squat, come to tiptoes, do a flat back squat, breathing, transitioning from hinging at the hip, keeping a neutral spine, that's the activity, coming up, finding yourself in tiptoes, keeping a neutral spine. As you flow through the joint sequences, from a basic squat to a tiptoes flat back squat and basic squat and tiptoes flat back squat and all the way and back down well done so that's one part you're going to come to your floor for seated this is where you're going to use your yellow band we'll start off with the band around the feet and then the legs will straighten. A beauty, usually, of increase of lordosis if it's structural is usually that the hamstring, that's the back of the thigh, is long. It tends to be long and weak, but it's certainly long or long and tight. I'm holding the band in such a way that there's some tension with my arms straight and then when I bend at my elbows, it's enough tension for me to work with. We're going to do forwards bending rib cage spine, so you'll breathe in. Breathing out, you're going to pull your elbows back, bend the rib cage, bend the rib cage, elbows go back, 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 crown of the head's reaching forward, your lower back's done nothing except stay flattened or more neutral. And on the next breath out, keep your arms in as you pull your rib cage thoracic area back into its longer line and then float your arms forwards again. Breathe in to prepare. Exhaling, zip up and hollow in seated neutral. Breathe in. Exhaling forward, flex the chin to the throat. As your breath out empties, you keep your elbows pulling right back to switch on more obliques and then you reverse everything back, thinking of the upper spine, not the lower spine. The lower spine stays in neutral and then flowing your arms up again. Last time. Exhale, zip hollow. Feel both sit bones equal. Even as your arms pull backwards, the abdominal wall should flex or compress through the um, navel to spine area. Staying here then, the forwards rolling neck, followed by the forwards flexing ribs, followed by the reverse, 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 is sequencing you in the upper spine and causing you to move there rather than the lumbar. Right, that was your warm up. Slide your heels back until you feel as though you've got your um, heels grounded still, legs are most certainly bent and the hands are by the knees. Now in this seated upright position with legs bent, the lordotic pelvic posture is allowed to get more freedom as it rolls back off the sit bones 
that flattens your spine and gives you your equivalent of a bend. Breathe in and then breathing out, you're going to bend the rib cage and come back up, making sure you have involved more than just the lumbar spine. Listen to me again. Inhale, you'll lean backwards. Now breathe out, roll off the sit bones until your arms are straighter and you've definitely flexed at the base of the ribs. Breathe in. Breathe out then and bend your elbows back, 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 back. You'll find yourself reaching crown of the head forwards. Breathe in, breathe out and find yourself sat upright. We're now going to take it into rolling off the sit bones and your aim is to lay this sacrum, then the lumbar and then some of the base of the rib cage down to a, a flattened high waist. Breathe in as you prepare and lean backwards. Breathing out, start to roll off the sit bones, pubic bone, pelvic floor, and feel every single vertebra lower down, sacrum, lumbar, into the last rib cage. I call it a high waist. Check both thigh bones are parallel, breathe in. Listen to me, breathe out, start pulling and bending the elbows to make sure you bend the rib cage and then the lumbar, and then you sit tall. Someone who's lordotic structurally does not want to overly flex. Well, this is what I mean. So once you've leaned backwards, the, the pelvis on the lordosis wants to get, feel as though it's whispering in the lumbar to the floor, because that's a massive range of movement if you have the opposite type of curve. And then you want to find the lower ribs below the bra strap. Breathe in. It's your lower ribs and elbows that bend. The lumbar is already way flexed for its shape and you come back up. I often find that people that have an increase of lordosis overly try to get imprint in rolling when they should involve more of the lower rib cage thoracic rather than more of the lower back making it bend where it was never meant to be. You can talk to me about that if you don't quite understand it. So inhale, lean back. Exhale, pelvic floor, pelvic hollow, easily rolling, using this band to make sure you don't strain the lumbar spine in trying to bend it through its opposite range. Breathe in. Remember, breathe out and bend your elbows because that will help your rib cage bend and therefore the obliques to flex properly without yanking on that lumbar. People, the next time we go down, we're going to stay. So you breathe in and lean back. You breathe out and experience, controlling it obviously with this yellow band, the range of movement that allows you to come all the way, all the way down. And you can lie flat. Breathe in and out. Keep the shoulders pulling away from the mat. On your next breath out, you'll nod. Breathe. If you can keep the legs straight, do but let this band help flow you up, 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 until you're tall. If you've worked at the right level, this lower back hasn't been forced through a range of movement it was never designed for, but the rest of the spine and the front has become involved in a way that it should. Positionally, next time round, you're going to come into your hands and knees. Our final activity is going to all fours for the lordotic. So the lordosis person, you can let your lordosis um, reign, as it were, in that opening moment, and you'll feel that big curve in the lumbar spine appear where it wants to be. It shouldn't cause you pain if you're naturally lordotic, but we're not able to work there because we want to come out of there. So breathing in, breathe out, draw up on pelvic floor. Start to feel the hip bones pelvic tilts you until you end up with what I sense as a flattened last rib to tailbone. Breathe in again and then breathe out and allow from the mid rib cage all the way down to the tailbone to go through its range. A secret when your lordotic is to allow that lordosis to work through its full range both in asking flexion to happen, flexion is hip bone to last rib, to then let the extension reappear, still keep controlling your abs, that's the secret, and if you're lordotic you'll find you can get your tailbone to the ceiling without feeling a pinchy lower back. We're now going to work you, so exhale and pelvic imprint, 
you're going to work you in what will feel to you like a really flattened and tucked under bottom to view it'll just look like a relatively flat spine i'm now here i'm going to tuck my toes under my feet breathing in and out as i breathe out i imagine my hip bones trying to tuck under my belly button and then on the next exhale i start to lift into tiptoes make sure that you feel comfortable with your foot position check your thighs and then breathe out take all of the tension out of the quad and take it into your belly your abdomen your obliques if you keep pushing the ground away as you float the legs up and down you maintain what will feel to you like a really rounded spine as long as that rounding is larger from the last rib to the tailbone you're actually training your obliques to shorten you're giving your back a rest and you're getting stronger through the upper body thoracic flat area last moment then come out of it tuck your bottom under to pull it down in the direction of your heels this is now a stretch my hands have stayed where they are breathe in breathing out then tuck your bottom under and slide your hands and find yourself coming up into your kneeling stretch this is thigh stretch as you're kneeling you're tilting your pelvis finding your obliques breathing and then leaning back to get the lengthening out through the um, flexors and returning forwards exhale draw zip up and hollow don't clench the glutes try and let the quads do what they should do and forwards remember when you do this you are only allowed to lean back for as far as you can maintain pelvic stability which requires your obliques your hamstring and glutes in their stabilizing position this will not hurt the knee joint although the pulling is allowed to go right over the knee because the muscle that crosses your knee your rectus femoris is involved in this alignment just do me one more leaning back and forwards you'll know you've done that right because nothing happens to the lumbar spine okay so that's all we're going to do in this one i'm going to do the next one and these are your three videos to play with i'll actually stop and restart just because it's a better way of putting these videos um, online for you to a la carte the menu remember if you've been increased of lordosis every cue is for you the equivalent of a pelvic tilt with the right muscles doing it. I'll see you in a few moments with another video.